Hey everybody, I'm Taylor Rooks and this is the Second Wind Podcast. good y'all welcome to another episode of the second wind podcast i'm your host james aka the great one aka geo whatever rolls off your tongue the best obviously i'm here with my best friend my co-host my ace my right hand man jarvis j mills whatever you want to call him you know he got the fresh fade today he actually he might act a little unusual jarvis tell the people bougie. tell the people we got today bro tell the people we got today we have the luxury of interviewing one of the best sports journalists in the world our sister also one of the better players of heads up in the world as well too our sister taylor rooks thank you so much for joining us on the show today oh my gosh i'm so happy to be here but i think um yes through that intro i'm realizing i i need a nickname because why do you all have a lot of them yeah man (laughs) but rooks t rooks t rooks Rooks, yeah but i don't i don't know if you you like the best heads up player like you might be am i better than you i don't i don't know if you better than me jarvis it's no, I think the Taylor, cap I think has Taylor already began. Because even he knows it. That's why he's not, saying you, that. You're right. You right there. We neck and neck. It depends on the day. To uh, okay. okay. A lot of day. days have swung my way. I will say that. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I don't well, know about Well, that. today, our choice of wine is Camus, your favorite. Please yes. tell us, when's the first time you drank this? So, first time I had Camus actually was in the NBA bubble. Right. Um, because wine was a very big thing in the bubble. I think CJ McCollum was one of the guys that like, made his room almost like a wine cooler. He set his room to a specific temperature and just had crates of his wine and other wine flown in. So he was kind of like the candy man in the bubble, giving people wine. Um, But wine was definitely like big fellowship there because there was not much that you could do. Um, And so Camus was one of the main choices of some guys at the wine they had. So I ended up with a bunch of bottles. That was like the first time I really had it. And then Actually, the second time I remember having it and saying, oh, I really like this, was I think New Year's one year when we were all at Say's and yeah. we had Camus. Um, And so now it's just one of my favorites. It's not fancy at all, really. Like, whenever I tell a real wino that I like Camus, yeah. they're like, oh, okay. But I like it. <laughs> Camus is the choice of wine for the gang. Yeah, for sure. But no, that's, that's always our go-to. <laughs> so um, let's jump right into this, like, Thursday night football. Yeah. Like, that is huge. Like, I remember you called me. I was geek. I'm jumping up around. We screaming on the Mm -hmm. phone. I'm pounding my chest. Like, that's my sister. That's my sister. How did that come to fruition? Like, how did that transpire? Yeah. I mean, you know, they really want Amazon Thursday night football to be this, like, new, innovative way to watch the game. You know, it's going to be interactive. It'll be, like, fan involvement. It's just going to be a fresh way to consume the product that we know of for Thursday Night Football. One of the ways they wanted to do that was to really incorporate long form, sit down, feature interviews that aren't so like cut and dry, question, answer, question, answer. Um, And that's really what I do. And so they said, you know, we know you are acclimated in the NBA world. We want to bring you over to this side. And it worked out. And thankfully, I'm able to do both. Um, And I'm really, really excited to get started. We have really good games this season, too. So it's going to be good. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to watch you because I know like this is like another step, like yeah. another, you know, stepping stone in your career. And it's like super exciting for you because, you know, you're just you, you go into different verticals now, you know, yeah. like where you started. You know, I met you five years ago where you started yeah. compared to where you are now. It's like it's amazing to see because when I first met you, which is a funny story how we met. But <laughs> <laughs> when I first met you, you know, you were Taylor Rooks the sports, you know, journalist, right? Mm-hmm. Now you're like Taylor Rooks. That. Oh, the, that's so know, kind. Now Thank you're Taylor you. Rooks, the sports journalist. You know, Her. you found a way to <laughs> elevate in different verticals. Obviously, you're known in the sports world, but you're also well-connected in entertainment. You're well-connected mm-hmm. in Hollywood. You know, you're well-connected in the tech world. Like, mm-hmm. everyone knows Taylor Rooks at this point. You know, how did you find a way to differentiate yourself from your peers? Yeah, Um. Well, first off, everything you said is very nice. Thank you. Um, But it has always been really important to me to not allow other people to, like, put me in a box. I think it's really easy to, like, see a woman and say, okay, this is what she does. And, like, you decide to define her based on that thing. But one thing I know about myself is like above just being in the sports business, I think I'm in the people business. And that means that it's about connecting to all different types of verticals, like you said. And sometimes it's really easy for us to feel like because we do one thing, that can be our 
only thing. I've never felt like because I do sports, that means I can't interview a rapper or an actor or whoever, because as an interviewer, you should be able to talk to anybody who has something to say. And what I really learned through doing this is like, these boxes that exist are actually boxes that we put ourselves in. Like you think that you're only a reporter. You think that you're only a host. You think that you're only an anchor. Like me just being an interviewer was not really a thing that existed. People, like I said, they're hosts, they're anchors, they're reporters. But sitting down doing long form interviews as your main job and only job is not really a thing that exists in sports. But I knew that it was the thing that made me the most fulfilled and made me feel like my work was important. So I said, it doesn't really matter if long form interviews aren't a thing right now. It's I'm going to make it a thing. Um, and one of the reasons I think that it has been successful is because I've been able to touch different people. Um, and above all else, I really just like meeting others. Um, and so I don't want to close myself off to one world when there's a vast universe uh, of opportunity. Absolutely. Like I always tell you, your personality is illuminating. Like your aura, very, very you know, it brightens up the room. As soon as you walk <laughs> in, you're like, hey, you know, you're very nice. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, thank bro, you. Like, <laughs> it's like when, when she plays heads up. And so, yeah, that's the only time I'm like, up. I don't care about nothing. Uh, unless you yeah. want to like her team. That she, actually, she's not even nice when you're on her team. She's like competitive. Yeah. You got yeah, right. to right. get it right. You can't come but in here on those. To what you're saying, that's something I always tell people. Like, that is a skill. Like, people, I don't think, understand that, like, personality traits are also skills. Like, being kind to everyone, being warm, like, mm. being comforting. These are all things that lend to the job. You know, I want people to sit in front of me and feel comfortable saying what they want. I want them to feel like they're not being judged. I want them to feel like it's a welcoming space that they can be open if they want. And all of that stuff truly begins from the moment that you meet them um, because they are deciding what they think about you, how they can talk to you. Um, and a lot of that comes from like treating everyone the exact same, being nice to everyone, being welcoming to everyone. So I think for some people, it's like easy to write it off. It's like, oh, like she's like a kind person, but like that is a skill too. Everything that you do for the job, like it really is a skill. Absolutely. Looking like I'm curious. So like looking back on your life, I always like to ask people this. Like looking back on your life, mm -hmm. did you always expect like did you always expect to be where you are platform wise, like career wise and like, you know, m maneuvering through your career? Like has there been any obstacles or like second wins you've had to catch, mm -hmm. you know, just to get to the point that where you are, you know, especially being a black woman in this space, you know, and the struggles that you guys go through. So yeah. uh, explain that. Yeah. I mean, well, the answer to your first question is yes. And I mean that. And I think that we kind of have to normalize women and especially black women saying that they are doing exactly what they thought. Mm -hmm. Like we think sometimes it's like not a humble thing to be like, I made a goal for myself and I set it and I'm doing that thing. But we hear men do it all the time. Men don't talk about being the best all the time. They say they did. They <laughs> said they want to do this and they did it. Right, right. You know, so right. I'm here to say, yes, I truly believed that I could be everything that I am now. I really believed that. And I thought that every move that I made was a step towards whatever that thing was. Um, it's a thing that Jack and I talk about a lot. Jack Harlow, we're like, we decided that we were going to almost like curate our lives. Yep. We were like, this is what you I manifest. wanted to look like. Yeah. Right. And what, what do you do for it to look like that? And I really had to step back and say, it's really, I'm really thankful. And I've been really lucky and I'm really grateful that I have become what I said I wanted to be. And in so many ways, I've become more than the thing that I said I wanted to be or what I thought I was going to be. And I look back and I'm like, were there times that I was maybe putting limits on myself without realizing it. Like when I was growing up, I was like, okay, one day I want to have my own show. Then I got the show and it's like, well, what's the next thing? Right. So you're always looking for the next thing. What yeah. you accomplish that, right? Yeah. Your right. passions change. What fulfills you changes. And I am now at this point where like, I don't necessarily want to set goals for myself because then you think that goal is the finish line. Really, that goal is just a marker on the journey of like the ultimate thing that you want, you know, this ultimate person that you want to be. Um, but yeah, I do. I do mean it when I say like what I'm doing now, I always thought I could do since I was six years old. And I was like recording myself, interviewing myself like this is what I wanted. And I'm really, really lucky that I have um, been able to do it. But of course, there's been hard times where you felt like, okay, maybe you weren't going to be able to do it. You have so many people that doubt your ability. Um, it doesn't matter what you accomplish, though. Someone will always be doubting your ability or why you're there. So you're always having to 
to kind of check in with yourself and remind yourself why you're there, what you've done, and know that, like, you know, you don't necessarily fluke your way to success, even if people want to make you feel that way. Um, all the rooms that you're in, you are really supposed to be in. Absolutely. That's dope. Do you ever, do you ever feel like you, like self-doubt was ever a thing? Like mm -hmm. throughout those, you know, hardships or like, you know, those tough moments, like with self-doubt, do you have to pep talk yourself and just like talk about like those situations? Yeah. I mean, I think that I don't, self-doubt maybe is the word, but I think that when you're first starting, one of the things that you have to be very cognizant of is only believing your voice, right? Because you're going to hear so many other people say things about you or your work. And it's easy to like examine it and think like, is that true? Like, are they right? And so just always checking in with what you know about you and who you are and what you've done. Um, because I would think sometimes what people call self-doubt is actually them listening to others. Right. Um and so it's really just understanding that like the others really are just that, like they're just others um, and not letting it really influence your view of you is something that I try to. But e uh, like everyone experiences that, right? right? Anyone Absolutely. who says that they've never doubted themselves like isn't telling the truth. You overcome that. And even if it's just for one second, but it's so much of it is knowing who you are, like right. knowing who you are is also a skill. And I think that a lot of people don't know who they are. 100%. Um, but the more that you like check in with yourself and ask yourself questions, I think that that doubt starts to like be cast aside a little bit. Absolutely. And a lot of the times that doubt, like you said, comes from, you know, people on the outside. But, you know, a wise woman once said, like, you don't yell at the dog for barking at the mailman. So, you know, <laughs> he's a dog. That's what you expect. Yeah, that's what you expect. <laughs> so, you know, no matter what pinnacle you get to, yeah. you know, you could be the best of the best in your career, you know people are always going to have something negative to say and people are always going to have something positive to say. So yeah. like you said, I think knowing yourself and being true to yourself is a skill, you know, being yeah. able to block out, keep your blinders on, you know, be focused on the next thing, like you said. Yeah. And also like, and this is something probably I still work on now, but I really had to work on like some years ago is not caring about the good stuff that right. much either. Yeah. Because if you do care about people complimenting you or like You'll what Twitter is saying right. about you, when you aren't getting that, it will feel like 20 times worse. Like, because I've heard people say, you just have to focus on the good. I think that you'd have to focus on you. Because like focusing on the good, the logical adverse reaction to that is focusing on when it's not good. Like it's not giving criticism that much love and it's also not giving compliments that much love like it's being appreciative right of people that love your work and fuck with you do y'all cuss on here yeah you got okay it. You got and like it. you know the fuck with <laughs> you, you and got stuff it. like all that is important but even that you can't give too much weight in your glass you know what i mean because yeah. when that glass is empty it'll feel empty right so just really trying to stay i think Stay the course with that too Absolutely. is important can't get too high you can get so too low. so you've yeah. got some top 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 talent that you've interviewed Allen Iverson Barack Obama like that's insane like what tell me go through your top five interviews of all time that you, you know in order yeah. so top five because of like who they were or top five because the conversation um I would say who you who you wanted to interview and like yeah. what, what those top five meant to you yeah I mean I'd say Barack Obama even though it's so funny I'm always like I talked to him for like 10 minutes we that's got to cool. ask two questions that's still cool. but it was cool um because yeah he's like he's on my Zoom and you all of a sudden are like, oh my God, like Barack Obama is saying hi, right. Taylor. It's oh crazy. I saw it. Yeah, That's I was like, crazy. I like didn't stop smiling, you know? Right. Um, but I would say Barack Obama, um, Alan Iverson, like mm -hmm. you said, was one for sure. Um, I mean, I have so many favorites. Um, I love Candace Parker. So that was a, a really, really cool one. I'll say Michael B. Jordan just because it was one of the first times on the show that we had an entertainer. Right. And so that was just cool because it set a precedent of like, we can continue to do this because it, it like had a lot of views. Um, and then I'll do a couple for ties. I think it's really fun whenever you get to interview your friends. Like anytime I get to do a sit down with Saquon or like Ja, that's mm -hmm. really fun yeah. because I think that you get really special conversations from the other person when you have a friendship because they feel more comfortable than normal and it just creates really good content. So I'll say those. I'm sure I'm forgetting some people that I really enjoyed no, interviewing. A, a KD, um, 
but yeah, there's there's definitely been some some really special ones. That's a fire list. That's a fire list. Oh, fire thank list. you, thank you, thank you. Um, just you know, being a black woman in this industry, obviously, mm-hmm. actually being a black woman in any industry, Period. you know, the cards are already stacked against you. So can you speak on just you know just being a black woman in the industry, the negatives that comes with it, but also the positives yeah. that come with it. So negatives, I would say, obviously, you're always having to, like, prove that you're a billion times better. I think that that's just, like, Black people in general. You don't really feel like you have the luxury of making mistakes. Um, And going back to the first thing I said, it's, like, you don't have the luxury of not being the best. Like, you almost, you are already so behind that even to get there you will you already had to have done way you have to more do double. yeah right. like way more so i'd say that but in a lot of ways that ends up being a positive because you're so prepared you're so ready for the job you are running like a well-oiled machine you know what i mean so i would say that's that's probably the the top ones um i do think that black women tend to be very over sexualized and not just in my industry i just think in general black women tend to be over sexualized um but the positives that come from it I think in sports, a lot of sports, they are black. So I think there's a familiarity um, that comes when I'm interviewing people. They feel comfortable to talk about certain topics. They might not feel that comfortable um, talking about to somebody who is not black. black. Um, I also think that, like, we just we understand the athlete in a different way, um, in a really important way, uh, in ways that I think until what maybe the past 10 years and it really exists in the media space. I don't mm-hmm. know if athletes really felt comfortable really talking about things. Um, so there are definitely a lot of advantages. I think that there are some advantages that come with being a woman too. I think men innately trust women more. Um, so, I so, agree. Yeah, right. yeah, no, so sometimes you're just like, okay, I'm going to talk about this maybe when I don't normally um, feel like I can. So it's a, it's a lot of, a lot of different things I'd say. I love that. So in terms of, you know, uh, what we were just talking about being a black woman in that space, when you start dropping, like, your name, Pam Oliver, Jamel Hill, like, you're in that you're in that conversation. Like, how does that feel? Like, as, like, a black icon, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many people, like, we, you tag me in a post or I tag you in a post and, you know, young black girls or uh, girls, you know, that I know, like, oh, my God, you know, Taylor Rooks. And it's uh-huh. like, you know, like, you are something to them. Yeah. Like, talk about, like, what that means to you. Like, like, have you ever viewed yourself as an icon? Or, like, are you in that space? <laughs> no, but I would I would first say for sure, like, I I absolutely, like, stand on the shoulders of, like, Pam Oliver, of right. Carrie Champion, of Jamel Hill, of Robin Roberts. Like, they are why we are. You know, me, Malika, Roz, Maria. Like, they really began what this is, right? They are so smart so capable they have they have a voice know how to use their voice they're the best at at whatever thing that they have been doing and a lot of them they were like they didn't really put themselves into boxes either you know like Mm -hmm. carrie's podcast now too she does entertainers she does athletes it's so many different things um so it's really important for me to say like i don't exist if they didn't already exist and like lay this groundwork and I think really be trailblazers um, in this space. And I'm sure I'm forgetting so many names, but when it comes to black women that did this, like that's really who, who first comes to mind for me. Um, I would say, as far as your second question, the thing that's most important to me above all is I want to feel very attainable to black people, specifically black women. I never want to feel like I'm something that's like far off. Um, it's important to me a lot of the time to like say like I am brown skin. I have very apologetically black. Yeah, I I have very stereotypically black features. I'm like I got a big nose, I got big lips, I got high cheekbones. Like all of these things to me are important to put into the forefront because I remember when I was growing up. A lot of times when I would see black women on TV. They were much lighter than me. Their face was like maybe a little daintier than mine. And when you're seeing that a lot, you're like, well, that doesn't necessarily look like me. And it makes you feel like even though like obviously they're black, you think you have to look different than you do to be able to be on TV. And so it's just like always important to me to be cognizant of the people that are watching that do look like me, not just because they're black, but because of truly how they look. Um, So it's more, it's more that is what makes me happy when you say that like someone will DM you and say, oh, you know her, like I watch her stuff because I want them to see like 
themselves at me because that's something I feel like I didn't always see when I was watching stuff. And like what I always say, too, is I think that like like I'm no special or no more special than like any of them. Everyone is equally special. I just think that there are people that have had the advantages of an advocate or of the luck that comes with being in any space like I just have had some things go my way. I think everyone does a disservice when they attribute success that they've had to hard work because it's not just about hard work there. Oh, and it's, it's not just about talent either. Yep. Everyone works hard. Everyone right. is talented. But so many other things have to stack up. And I just think it's important for Black people and like I said, Black women specifically to know that like everything that you want to be and everything that you can be really is in you. And like focus on that because everything else around you, you can't control. And sometimes the stuff you can't control, that'll be what stops you from like maybe being this thing. But that doesn't change like who you actually are. Um, so I just I don't want the black woman to like look at me like an icon. I want them to look at me like this is my girl down the street. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. Because that's like what I feel like, too. Um, but it is very nice of you to say. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> the girl down the street. I'll yeah. be looking at you like that heads up player that's, you know, <laughs> almost as good as me. But she's, you know, she's right. Yeah, you know, okay. She's right up there. <laughs> um, just, you know, a little flashback. You know, we sat at dinner one night. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do the thing where everybody says their goals for the year. Right. And I remember your goal was, I want to be nominated for an Emmy mm -hmm. and I want to win an Emmy. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, you were nominated this year. You didn't win. But knowing you and knowing how just cerebral you are and yeah. how you always want to go to the next level. How do you think you take the step to be, you know. Emmy Award winning. Yeah. Taylor Rooks. Oh, I'm winning that Emmy. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I like that. I yeah, 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 yeah. I need a little toast for that. Toast for that. Give me a little. Yeah, pull, me up, pull me up, Pull me up. Pull me up. Um, hey, can you finish already? Yeah. But, <laughs> oh, look at that. Stay just, sipping. Oh. He, he over there babysitting. <laughs> no, boy. I'm over there babysitting. And I was drunk. Pour, nah, not uh, even. Are you drunk? Pour me up. Nah, all right. I got it. I got it. So I will say my answer to that is twofold. So number one, I'm not going to lie. As I just said, I want that in me. I want to win. Um, I want to be able to walk into my apartment and see that there's an Emmy in there. Like, that is something that I want. Um, but sometimes I have these conflicting ideas because I just think, why do we feel like we need the Emmy? You know, like, why do these systems that exist define whether we're good enough or not? To feel you know like what a, I to mean? Feel accomplished. Yeah, like, right. why Why do I want to win it so bad? And that's not saying I don't win because I do, but sometimes I just think it's like, what does it mean that we care so much about these, like, very arbitrary, artificial things? Like, another thing I think of is, like, 30 under 30, right? So I turned 30 in May. I never won that. And I remember being like, dang, I can't believe I never won 30 under 30. I mean, being like a little sad about it. And I'm like, why do I give a fuck that I didn't make this list? Like, I made the list in real life. Why do I care whether or not Forbes is like, this person is 30 under 30? And I just think sometimes we get very caught up. And maybe, again, it's that, like, glorification of winning something and thinking that it means something. Um and it's like, does it really in the grand scheme? But I think that for me, the thing to like take that step is really Thursday Night Football. It's like stepping into that number one sport where they don't really like the NFL does media different than the NBA. Just like the way they story tell, the questions that they ask. And I think that if I'm able to bring that vibe and that world that I've created in basketball over to football, it will be like something that's like very innovative for that sport. Um, and I think that's probably how I would make that that next step. Absolutely. And you going you going to win that Emmy. Uh, hey, we, I don't know. we speaking it. Emmy. Right. <laughs> um, on this podcast, you know, it's called Second Win. We like to highlight, you know, everyone's second win, whether they felt like they already lived their second win, if they're currently in their second win or, you know, if they're just catching their second win. Where do you feel like in your career as a sports journalist, where do you feel like you are on that timeline. Yeah. I mean, I genuinely think right now, like I'm in my prime. Like, I think that this is where the real work happens. Like, I think that obviously entering into a different sport, but also continuing what I've already built. It's like, I have to make those 
interviews even more relevant and like more meaningful and figure out how to tell stories in more creative and like innovative ways. And I've really been thinking about with all the games that we have, how I can do that with players. Um, And then also just going into like the marketing side of things. I'm sure it'll be out by the time this airs, but like being in the new Madden commercial is something that's important. Like being in, even being in like Jack and Drake's video, like even though it's like for two seconds, it's showing like this is a multimedia type of person. She knows a bunch of different people. Being in the Jordan commercial, like yep. all of this is just like, I want people to be sick of seeing me on TV. Yeah, <laughs> I want you to feel like you turn it on and you're like, why is she on everything? Like, I just think that's how that media sort of takeover begins is like touching different areas. And I really just have begun to do that in these like this past year or so of my life, I would say. I think that I probably caught that second one, though, after my first job. My first job was at the Big Ten Network. I covered Big Ten football and basketball. Um, I was there for two years, and then I decided to leave because I just felt like my voice wasn't being utilized there. Um, I felt like in some ways I was like a bit underappreciated because they had put me into a box already. Yep. Regardless of like what I said I wanted to do to them, it was like, this is what you right. do, and this is what you're going to do. And I was like, I I have to make a move. Um, and I think, and and this did not happen to the Big Network. I'm going to be very clear about what I'm about to say. This wasn't there. But I remember just, like, different times, like, people saying, like, I might be too dark to be on TV. Like, there are things like that that, like, you hear these, like, That's crazy. So I don't want to call them, like, microaggressions, but maybe they are. I just think that... Is there's all these things that, like black people are always having to like deal with having people that like do your makeup that don't know how to do black people's makeup or people do your hair that don't know how to do black hair like and when you are coming up against that in so many different ways like you do have to find the second win in that sense because you it's very easy to get discouraged like this world was not made for me you feel um that's the one thing i tried to stop saying is i stopped saying that like this is a male dominated thing mm-hmm. like i think that men are in it but we aren't going to let them dominate it anymore there is a mm-hmm. lot of men but there are so many women coming up and it makes me so happy whenever any woman reach out, reaches out to me and talks about how they want to do sports because it's like i don't think it's as like weird of a thing anymore. Like it used to be rare to see a woman do sports. Now there are so many. Um, And I think that's important too. And I think thinking about that is why I kind of had to catch that second win when I would hear these like very negative things um, about myself that is really just like a negative reflection of them. But you start to feel like it's you, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So when you were maneuvering like through things like that, like what are like some things you did for like your mental health? Mm -hmm. Like as like I was talking to Juan, like, yo, Taylor, I've never seen someone travel more than you. Oh, yeah. I'm on a move. Like you're you're always on the move and like, you know, you're pulled in so many different directions, interviews, people. Like what are some things, you know, and also being a black woman, like what are some things you do to work on your mental health? Mm -hmm. Like because I know that's just, you know big and key right now just focus on your mental health and focus on you and always making sure you're at your best like what are some things that you know you do to you know better yourself i think that everybody should try therapy at least once uh i used to go once a week and then when the pandemic happened we got off the schedule and i wasn't going so i haven't gone for maybe like a year and a half but i would go once a week and i just think it's great i think that a lot of times black people hear therapy and they think that it means something's wrong with you or like you're going because something's wrong with you but Really, you just go and talk. Like a lot That's of the times, you not really talk about nothing. <laughs> like right, right, you're right. just being able to put words to feelings or like put words to like things that have happened to you. And it's just like a very good exercise to like be in tune with you and check in with yourself. So I feel like everyone should try it once. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But just trying it, I think, is important. Um, something else I do for my mental health too is like read. I love reading. I try to read a book a week. I just think that like the more that you have your mind going, that helps you mentally too. Um, I think hanging out with your like friends and family is very rejuvenating too. Um, One thing I do too, whenever I'm on a plane, I don't care if I'm going to Hong Kong. I never turn my phone on. Like I never do the Wi-Fi on my phone. I do airplane mode straight. If I work, I'll have like my Wi-Fi on my computer. But like that's my one break where like I don't text or anything like that. It's just like I shut myself off because I think 
Like that's literally the only time I'm not on my phone. That's when you be um, ignoring text the, messages and stuff like yeah. that. Oh, I know <laughs> right. about that. I yeah, know so about that's that. always like, sorry, I was in the air. Cause like, I don't see a text if I'm in the air. Um, and I just think in general, we don't realize it because we're used to it, but we communicate with other people too much. Like this, I don't really know if you're supposed to communicate with others as much as we do now. All the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there was this the really good article was, it was just like, we all know too much about each other. And I think that's absolutely true. Like the way our parents grew up, they didn't know the day to day of their friends. Like they didn't know everything that was happening with everyone all at once. You couldn't just open up your phone and like see what someone was doing. Um, and I think there's so many pros to that. I'm not knocking social media. I love social media. But if we can always be in tune, when do we take a break? And so for me, I'm just like, that break is the plane. Because it's just very hard, I think, to get overwhelmed. And I think that being overwhelmed is not good for your mental health. So a lot of right. it for me is just like being peaceful. And I also, I think y'all both know this about me. I don't do anything I don't want to do. At all. So that, <laughs> Ever. That's the number budge. one thing for my mental health is like not putting myself in any type of situation or with anyone I don't want to be around. Anything that drains me, uh, I try to be very cognizant of too. Yeah. I think uh, circling back to the therapy thing, like me and Jarvis talk about that all the time. Like there's like this negative connotation yeah. around therapy and it's like, it's, it's fire. I go to therapy. It's, I would recommend, just like, so I, good. I would re I helped me so much. Yeah. You know I saying? remember this past Super Bowl, I had DK Metcalf on uh, my show. And one thing he says is like, I don't know if you remember last season, he had like a bunch of on the field outbursts mm -hmm. yeah. and he was like, I went to therapy because of it. And, like, he attributes therapy to, like, why he was able to be a more calm and tuned football player. So a lot of time, like I said, we think it's just, like, something is wrong and you talk to somebody. But really, it's just, like, how can I be peaceful, even in moments that are not peaceful? And they just equip you with, like, really good tools for yourself. So I think we should, like, normalize how we talk about it. I talk to people all the time about it. I remember I had John on my show and he's explaining, like, being overwhelmed by like asks, always feeling like he has to provide and be there for everyone. Yeah. And he's like, that sounds like something I need to go to therapy for. So we have a conversation about what therapy can do. So I just think the more that you talk about what therapy actually is, and that's why it's important that y'all do it. It's important that men do it, that black men do it. Um, the more it becomes like normalized. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would say um, piggybacking off of that, like I, therapy is, one, I recommend it because it works for everybody. Well, mm -hmm. it doesn't work for everyone, but I say it worked for me. And, you know, I think people hearing you say that is so powerful. You know what I'm saying? Just like you saying that is so powerful, you know, just especially black men. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I think that's the conversation we need to have, too, as well. Like black men in that space and being vulnerable, right? And carrying those burdens. So, you know, you saying that's so powerful. I just want to say thank you for oh, even sharing course. that you go to therapy because that's amazing. Yeah, you know, no, a lot of people of aren't even a lot of people aren't even vulnerable to even admit that or take that step. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So just want to say thank you just for that. Um, but to close things, um, you know, I just want to say, what advice would you give to women, period, that are trying to break into the industry mm -hmm. or, you know, someone needing to catch their second wind or advice they need, you know, just keep pushing forward. What advice would you give to, you know, that young girl looking up to you or watching you on TV? What advice would you give to them? I would say know what you're good at, know what you're bad at. Um, really check in with yourself. Ask yourself questions. I say that all the time. Just like checking in with yourself is really important. Being real with yourself um, is really important. And also understanding like, what is the thing about you? Like, why should you do this? What's different? Like, what do you bring? And is this thing that you want to do, are you carving it based on what you've seen other people do? Are you trying to follow a specific path? Or do you feel like there's something that's like unique about what you do? Um, because that's the only thing that I think works in like this business is being different. Like there are a thousand people that do the same thing. Like, why do you want to be a thousand and one? You know, make make yourself really different. Um, I already said this, but like, know that you don't have any limits. Like, I'm not saying that in like an exaggerated way. I don't think that like any human has a limit. We can be the things that we want if we put our all into those things. Um, and then I think also just above all else, be good to people. I think that that has just really opened up the most doors for me. I think that 
people like working with me. I think that like brands and companies like to hire me. I think I'm easy to work with. Um, but I've seen people in this business like not be good to others. And that always has a limit on it. Um, so above all else, I just think like really be good to people for sure yeah you never know who's in the room you never know who you're talking to you yeah. never know who's around and who's spectating what mm -hmm. you're saying to the next person you know so mm -hmm. i think be good to people is a it's a huge yeah. gem I, I i like hang my hat on that like everyone that encounters me i try to be the nicest mm -hmm. like most happy dude of all time always smiling like that yeah. i feel like that's so important I think I'd also say to do it for the right reasons. Like, I think it was uh, when we were in Mexico, I was telling y'all how someone said to me, like, to do it out of love, never for it. Yeah. And it's like, that is so true. Like, you can't get into stuff like this if you just, like, want to be famous. Because, like, it's very quick to spot and that is, like, very fleeting and it yeah. won't last. Right. Absolutely. Like, you got to do it because you love it. Like, you cannot see yourself doing anything other than this. Um. And so really, like I said, just asking yourself, why do I want to do this? And is is my why something that is important and sustainable? Or is it something that's frivolous? Um, because when people are in it for something frivolous, frivolous, it's easy to break. Like you have to be like so solid to be able to like withstand a lot of the shit you're going to have to withstand to do it. Um, so I would I would say that, too. Absolutely. I know Jarvis's question was supposed to be the last one, but. I got one more. <laughs> Here you go. No, I'm just kidding. So I, I, I'm fine. Earth versus the Martians, right? <laughs> what? Listen, listen. What the hell is okay, he talking I'm about? listening. I don't know what somebody. I was like, is that the question? Right, right. Heads up, gang. They got their best four people. Okay. You the captain of the team. You know a lot of people. Your network is big. Right. Who the four people you picking, man? The four people I'm picking, like, who am I just in tune with and heads up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I will say this is, like, one of the best questions I've ever gotten because I've never thought, <laughs> thought about, about this. It. Okay. Who do I just kill it with? Okay. You're not going to hear this, but you know me and oh, Saquon. Oh, my God. He sucks. Bro, he's not. I, he's not that good. I I'm going to say this. It's not that he's good in a vacuum. It's that when I give him clues. He picks it up. Yeah. Like, right. I could say one word and he has it. Okay, yeah. We got Lil Wayne Ransom. Like, My what's up God. With you? We did. That's we crazy. did. But I also crazy. think that we end up not being on the same team a lot. Yeah. When you, you know, two of the best, they yeah. never on the same team. It's I like, was lit last time pick, we played. Me, so I'm out of it. Second <laughs> I'm out it. of it. Um... Of course, Shane. I have to put Shane in there. We're, we are good. Yeah, yeah. My mom. Me and my mom mm. are also very, very in tune. Y'all like twins. Y'all probably got yeah. telepathy. Yeah, we're in tune. Um, and me and Jack are really good, too. Okay. About okay. Harlow. I'm, uh, I'm off the bench, though. Yeah, you're on the no, team. No, you're on the bench, boy. But yeah. You're not I even in the say, gym, boy. That's cool. I would not say those cool. four. Well, though. I would say those four. And All maybe... Right. Wait, I'm going to take out... <laughs> Don't say mama. <laughs> Better not take that. I got to take out Shane and put Raven in. Or really? Jack and put Raven in. I Raven like Raven and I. Raven's, whole, Raven's no, fire. No, me and Raven are so good. We just haven't played in a long time, so she wasn't top of yeah, mind. Y'all can't that. beat me. Y'all got that telepathy. Y'all can't beat me. We know. So, literally, sure. like, she gives me a look. I'm like, oh. Right. Y'all yeah. ain't being me. I would say that. But you're 100% on my nah, team. Nah, I guess nah. But I'm going to say this. That's crazy. Sometimes, though... Let's see It'll be a word for Gio that I think is like so, so easy. obvious. And he won't get it, right? Because my mind, y'all don't Yo, understand. My that's mind why is, he's not on my, my team. team. Yeah. My mind is so intricate, though. It's like I really be no, thinking Gio, outside the box. It'll be like, I don't know. But I'm like, how <laughs> is he for sometimes. not getting this word? It's because, bro, we be having game night drinking this Cayman. <laughs> that's the get problem. Hit. When we, look, when we just... Cooling, like on some normal stuff, I'm I'm easily top three. Like, I'll I don't tell you care. who's no. bad. Micah. Horrible. Awful. Oh my God, Horrible. he's so bad. But he thinks like him and his man are, are the ridiculous. Best. They're so bad. So bad. Yeah, you know they're we so gonna, bad. We gonna get them my all My sister here. is also not good. I'm trying to think of everyone I play with. It's just like bad. I play with a lot of bad. Jaw, bad. Really? <laughs> so <laughs> bad. Because one, like a piece I did in the bubble was like we played heads up. Mm. God, Jaw was so bad. But um, categories for me, it depends on the category for, category, me, yeah. for me, at least. Well, See, but that's over. another great figure it out. I'm gonna figure, figure it out, <laughs> but depending on that category, man, 
while you're off the bench. You got me fucked up. No, boy. <laughs> like, I'm on the squad. And me off say, the bench. Y'all ain't beating me. I just think you need some more reps. Cause what? Just, yeah, but, no, but Gio, Gio, just admit what I'm saying is true. That there's been some obvious ones. Nah, you're right. But like, life's about you know, how you recover. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's about how you finish. Uh, it's about there we go. Real time. So like, that's the beginning of my heads up career. Toward yeah. the end of my career, you know, my birthday coming up. So shout yeah, out. So exciting. Yeah. I'm getting a little older. Mm-hmm. I'm going a, I'm to a keep progressing. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to get a little better every time. He's got to feed him some liquor and he's, He's all, but he won't win. <laughs> you don't even play, boy. You win. You're right. Nah, I'm going to some, I'm gonna get you some more uh, naturally ash for your knees. <laughs> Look, my <laughs> knees is cool, man. Y'all Shout be talking about... Shout out to Shout out to Ash. Shout Shout out out to Ash. Shout Shout nah, but uh, we appreciate you, Taylor, for of coming course. on. Thank man. you so much. <laughs> you need another Thank you so much. Congratulations on Thursday Night Football yeah. again. Thank you so much. I'm excited for that. My sister, we up. You know I love y'all. One thing, One thing this ring group will do is show up. We gonna show up for each other. We gotta fly across the country. Yeah. We coming. We, we gonna coming. show up, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but thanks. Thank you love so much, Taylor. I love course. you so much. Love y'all anytime. Gang and them. <laughs>